I stayed up for almost 36 hours this weekend. Let's talk about it. What's up, guys? It's Parallax Abstraction, and this is the Geek Bravado Ramble. And oh my god, I am a husk of a human being right now. Uh, it's about 5 p.m. on Monday, June the 6th when I'm recording this. And yes, I have just come off a nearly 36-hour stint with the Ottawa Extra Life Guild doing our second Extra Life 24-hour gaming marathon on the set of the Chio Telethon. Um, wow, what a thing. Um, I just wanted to do a post and a, a little uh, video to talk about this because what an incredible weekend. So this was a lot harder than a normal Extra Life because an Extra Life normally starts at 8 a.m. and goes to the following 8 a.m. This one, because it coincided with the telethon, was going from 7 p.m. to 7 p.m., which is way harder to calibrate your internal clock for when you, you know, work for a living, like most of us do. And in addition to that, normally when you're doing something like that from home, you get up like an hour before the marathon starts and you go right into it. This one, even though the event started at 7, uh, I and many others got up at about noon because we had to get to the EY Center where they held the telethon for two in order to get everything set up because this was our first time doing this and it came together fairly quickly. So yeah, by the time I we finished up, packed everything up, and I drove one of the other guild members home, helped her unload her stuff, got home, unloaded my stuff, talked to my girlfriend and played with the dog for a little while. I had been up for almost for about 34 hours when I finally fell asleep. I slept for 12 hours last night. I woke up at noon today. Uh, I guess it was more like 13 hours last night. I still hadn't slept nearly enough, but my brain was like, nah, son, you can't sleep that long. You got to get up. And yeah, and I got up to a panic service call from a client and actually spent most of the afternoon at his place. So that was interesting. So yes, I am double fisting today. Proud of it. Oh, but listen, I just wanted to talk about this event and also give thanks to a huge number of people because I say without hyperbole that what we did this weekend was one of the most amazing, gratifying experiences of my life. I still can't believe how well it went, what a success it was, and just what an, how incredibly everyone came together to make this an incredible thing. So a quick little thing for those of you who don't know. So I am on the committee for the Ottawa Guild for Extra Life, so the charity event that I have been talking up ever since I started this channel. You play games for 24 hours, you raise money for sick kids at our local children's hospital here, which is Chio. And... Uh, Chio has been a major advocate for Extra Life. They've seen the potential in it, and they have really encouraged us and really tried to work with us to improve things. Extra Life doesn't get a, a great reception by every children's hospital. There are some hospitals that still think video games are a time-wasting activity that makes people fat and does no good for the world. And uh, they basically just don't work with Extra Life and they kind of don't believe in it. That is not the case with Chio. Chio gets why games are good. They get the that gamers, by and large, are extremely good people who want to help and who want to leverage their hobby and their passion for something incredible. And they have backed that 110%. So every year in Ottawa, Chio holds a 24-hour telethon. They've been doing it for I don't know how many years now, but they were doing it when I was a kid. So it's been a long time. And they... It's a it's a yeah a televised event on CTV Ottawa that ra that where they raise money for Chio. It's Chio's biggest single fundraising event of the year. They raise millions of dollars. I remember when I was in high school and they hit two million dollars raised for the first time, and that was considered basically a miracle because that year they weren't expecting to hit that target. Well, we crossed eight million dollars raised for Chio this year. After years of the total just going up and up and up, they hit a new record almost every year. And yeah, last year they came within a, just the tiniest inch of $8 million and they didn't quite make it. This year they did. And when they announced the final total, the place exploded. It was just incredible. We all went from being completely tired husks of people to being pumping with adrenaline. Having to take apart our area there was was no no big thing. It was uh, it, like we were just all full of energy. We were ready to go. It was it was amazing. And um, yeah, we had no real expectation for this. Chio came to us with the idea of doing a second extra life on the telethon. We'd always said in the back of our minds, oh, wouldn't that be cool if we could do that? But it never actually happened. Uh, we never really pursued it. And Olenka Roshitnik, who is our uh, the sort of lady that we deal with at Chio and one of the, the nicest, most driven people I've ever met, 
um, actually came to us and said, hey, what do you guys think about this? And we were like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and this this uh, this came together. And I have to say the Chio Telethon is one of the most well-organized things I've ever seen. Um we went there on Thursday to set up. They had our area all set up. The Brick donated a whole bunch of really nice couches for us to use that we had there. Uh, so we went and got the area all set up. They had um, uh, the, co the company called Freeman that works and provides all the infrastructure for the EY Center came to us to talk about what we would need for internet because people were playing games online and there was a whole bunch of people streaming from there. We told them what we needed. They were like, yep, no problem, no problem. We got there on Saturday to set up. The The lady, uh, Laura from Freeman, who was also an amazing lady, came by and went, what do you guys need? <clears throat> and we went, we're going to have PCs here, here, here. There's going to be consoles over here. And she's like, no problem. Half an hour later, we had 30 megabit synchronous fiber internet done. Uh, it, it, I couldn't believe it. Like I go into big events like this expecting to have to hound people and make, you know, constantly remind them what needs to be done. Cause that's normal. Not this one, man. These people are sharp as a tack. It was incredible. Uh, it was, everything was so well organized. They hooked us up really good. We had our own coffee machine. We had our own water machine and our own fridge within our area. We had, oh my God, the food they brought us. They had a huge pile of food in the, in the sort of common area that we were fully allowed to go partake in. But they also brought us, they brought us Panda Express, they brought us Subway, we had pizzas, we had McDonald's for breakfast and lunch, uh, bring stuff in, we had, uh, oh my god, I can't remember what else, we had lasagnas there, we had, they fed us incredibly well, it was, it was unbelievable, uh, and the event was just so well organized, so we had about 25 people there. Uh, I don't remember what the exact count of all the different uh, groups was, but we had quite a number of PCs there. We had three big round tables, big round tables full of PCs there. A good chunk of us were streaming. We had a bunch of console players there. And then the Ottawa board gaming community showed up. They brought with them approximately 60 board games, which was their, I quote, traveling set. And uh, they showed up with just a just a massive inventory of stuff, and we had a big area set up for them, and they were there for the whole 24 hours too. They sat there and uh, they did board games of all types right along with us. Almost every kind of gaming you could think of, maybe except for like Dungeons and Dragons. We didn't have that going on, but Matt, that's that's in our minds. Don't you worry about that. And uh, it, it was it, it was such a great event. The area was just. I, I, I'm gonna probably slideshow some pictures in this video. But there was, uh, there was computers everywhere. There was wires all over the place. It was lit up like a Christmas tree in there with all the computer stuff. It was nuts. And uh, we, they just, everything was so organized and everybody was so driven. A bunch of people who haven't been to a lot of our actual guild meetings showed up and they stuck it out. Most of us stayed up the entire 24 hours. A few of us had to take some cat naps because this is not an easy thing to do. Uh, and But uh, most of us stayed there the whole 24 hours. I don't, very few people actually left early. I, if anyone did, I'm actually not sure if anybody left early. Uh, but we had a great crew. Everybody had a fantastic time. Uh, and the thing that really impressed me about what they did there is, so the Chio Telethon is, it's they raise money for 24 hours, but the Telethon doesn't run for 24 hours because not a lot of people call in at night and no one wants to do on-air segments during the night because nobody sees it because everybody's asleep. So between 11 p.m. and 9 a.m., the Telethon's actually dark and it just airs previously recorded stuff. Uh, so the EY Center was dark. All the crew was gone. You know, all the lights were out and everything. There was a couple of people there helping to maintain the phone system. And other than that, we were left on our own completely. Like they had, they didn't know any of us from anyone. And they left us, like we could have wreaked havoc there if we wanted to. Of course we didn't. But they had full trust in us and they just left us there. And they said, yeah, you guys said you're doing it for 24 hours. So go right ahead. The kitchen's back there. You guys want food. You guys want coffee. Go get it. And I just couldn't believe it. They had complete trust in this this group of young people, ranging all the way from teenagers up to people, you know, in their 900s like me. And uh, they, they didn't even flinch. Uh, the, 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 the trust they showed was unbelievable. And we, you know, I hope we've earned their trust for the future because uh, everybody was very good. No one caused any trouble. There was no drama. There was no nothing. It was, uh, it was just great. It, it was perfect. And... Uh, we had Alex Munter, the CEO of Chio, um, the CEO of the Chio Foundation, a whole bunch of local media personalities. Everybody else came through the area because they wanted to see what it was about. And most of them, like Alex Munter very clearly doesn't, like he's not a gamer. He, he really doesn't understand games at all. And that's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. 
But he came by the area clearly not knowing what to expect, like what he was going to see there, because he, he had not really little to do with organizing this. But he came in and he saw it and he talked to me and he talked to a bunch of other people and he saw what we were doing and he was just like, this is crazy. He's like, this is, this is amazing stuff. He's like, I can't even comprehend what you guys are doing here or how you set it up. But he's like, the passion of all these young people is amazing. And he's like, I really love this idea of you guys leveraging your love of video games because he said one of the biggest, you know, what a lot of people said, he didn't say this specifically, but what a lot of people said is that the hospital is having a really hard time figuring out how to reach a younger demographic. You know, a lot of young people, they don't watch TV anymore. I don't watch TV anymore. I don't have cable. I haven't had cable in seven years. And, uh, you know, people don't watch stuff like the telethon and people don't partake in a lot of the events that are generating a lot of the money these days. And they're really concerned about what to do going forward in terms of reaching a younger demographic and reaching, uh, new people. And, uh, you know, this is one of the ways you do it. You know, video games are a massive cultural phenomenon now, and they have been for a long time. And, you know, most young people now are gamers in some form, and they're realizing that encouraging and stoking these new communities and these new passions and these new ways of raising money, this is the path going forward. This is how they're going to keep raising those record totals every year. And they get it. And he saw what we were doing and it, I, I could tell by the look on his face and the way he was talking. He was like, I really don't understand this, but you guys do. And it's working because you love doing this. People love watching you. Like he didn't know what live streaming was. I had to explain to him what live streaming was and what Twitch was. And, you know, he was one of those people who you get this a lot from older people who didn't grow up with games. They kind of look at it and go, people just sit and watch other people play video games on the Internet. And as someone who doesn't even, even though I do live streaming, I don't watch a lot of it. And even me, I'm kind of like, yeah, I know, right? It's, <laughs> it's a hell of a thing. Um, but he, he, he wasn't dismissive of it and he didn't go, oh, games, geez, what are, what are you guys wasting your life on with that? He got it and everybody else got it. And uh, yeah, it, it, it was so encouraging. Um, everyone was supposedly very impressed with what we're doing. The rumor is we are going to get invited back to do this possibly on a yearly basis going forward. We apparently generated a lot of buzz and impressed a lot of people with this. And that's exactly what we wanted. We didn't necessarily raise a ton of money. We did raise a decent amount as a group, but no one individual raised a ton. And that's just mostly because, you know, the main extra life happens in November. A lot of people didn't even realize they could donate. Now, a lot of people think you can't donate to extra life until game day. They don't realize that you can fundraise all year. So we didn't get a ton of money. I got some, um, but, um, that was not unexpected. This was mostly more to drive awareness uh, than anything else. Uh, but I had a great time. Um, man, I, I said I was going to attack the backlog, so I played The Division a bunch. Mm. I don't know if I'm going to finish that game because the missions are very clearly designed around having multiple people and the community for the entry-level content in that game is dead. Uh, I tried to match make with some early missions. I got in a party with one guy. We were constantly getting stepped on. Uh, by the AI and no one else joined. So uh, I don't know. I may not be able to get too far with that game. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, I was mostly attacked the backlog. So I did that. I did um, two out of the three missions in the new Hitman. I actually meant to get back to the third one and didn't, which is unfortunate, but that game is really good. It It's really, really good. Um, I really enjoying that. I, I'm glad I bought that in the season pass because I love the Hitman series and this game is a Hitman ass Hitman game. It's really, really good. Uh, played some Overwatch, which was good. Um, my buddy Reeton and I uh, from the Reeton Entertainment Podcast, which I regularly guest on, uh, played for a while. Uh, we didn't do great, but we did o we did okay. Uh, well, I can't even remember everything I played, but uh, I played some other stuff. And man, my buddy Keymaster, this dude... I've talked about him before. Keymaster showed up during my Dark Souls stream in 2011, and we've been kind of online friends ever since. And every time I do Extra Life, he shows up and hangs out for hours and hours and hours because he's a crazy person. Uh, he's also an epic Dark Souls guy. So I had played a bit of Dark Souls 3, but not very much uh, because I'd been so busy the last while. And he's like, well, why don't we fire that up? You know, let's play some of that. Uh, you can, you know, you can summon me in and we'll do some stuff. So I was like, okay, cool. 
Seven hours later, he and I steamrolled about 80% of that game. We were just on fire. Holy crap. We got into that thing and we were just rampaging through it. The two of us were just killing bosses left, right, and center. Holy frig, it was awesome. We didn't finish it because he had to go to work, unfortunately, but we made a big, big dent. Uh, I wasn't very far in, but we were just plowing through that sucker. And uh, it was funny, I had a couple of really hilarious deaths that he, deaths due to traps that he knew was going to happen, <laughs> and he let them happen because it made for good watching, so uh, that was fun, thanks for that buddy, uh, that was really cool, and then um, I, tr I tried to finish up by finishing up Uncharted 3 from the Nathan Drake collection, which I'm trying to finish before I play Uncharted 4, that was rough. It was really funny. So in the last couple of hours, I fired that up. And if I got it, like, I, and I was tired. Like, I'd been up over 30 hours at this point. I was practically delirious. But the funny part was, if I got a combat sequence, so, you know, where you got to fight guys, you got to be quick and have your hand-eye coordination, I was perfect. My, you know, my aim was good. I was doing, uh, I was, um, yeah, my aim was really good. I was, uh, my, my coordination was spot on. I was doing really well. I got to the puzzles... And that was quite a thing. The puzzles in Uncharted are not difficult. Um, they are very, very basic. But I would get to some of these things, and I'd beaten the first three Uncharted games before on PS3 years ago, and I would get to some of these puzzles, and I would just sit there like this, just staring at it because I couldn't figure them out because my brain was just like, I don't have the capacity to parse a, a logic puzzle right now. And I'm sitting there going, God damn it, this is so simple. I can figure this out. I can do it. I can do it. And I, I was just, I was getting mad <laughs> trying to figure it out. And then I would finally get through it. And then as soon as I get to an action sequence, it would snap right back again. Uh, it was, uh, it, oh God, it was funny. I had a few people who were watching who, who, who were laughing their heads off uh, at that apparently, which was really good. And, uh, yeah, I went for the whole 24, and more amazingly, um, Devin Payette, uh, also known as Cookies and Game, and you may have seen him in my comments uh, before, uh, he's a young kid who um, was Chio's champion last year. He has a bunch of very severe uh, illnesses that he's been dealing with over the years. And I actually gave him, when I built Zylender House over here, which, by the way, was a bloody champ and held up no problem through this. This this thing is now officially broken in, and it is working a dream. I'm very happy about that. Uh, but after I built this, I decided to give my old gaming PC to him uh, because he just had a laptop, and he wanted a computer that he could actually make games on as well as play them. So I actually... Hey, Dougie. Um, I actually gave him um, my old... Uh, PC and uh, my employer's grade A donated a monitor and uh, a mechanical keyboard for him as well. And he said he wanted to come to the event and he wanted to do the whole 24 hours. And I was like, um, I was kind of like, no offense, dude, but that's hard for us who are in pretty good health. You know, are you sure you can handle it? And he was like, oh, yeah. And his parents said, too, they're like, oh, he's committed and we're going to let him if he can do it. So his big brother actually came with him and hung out. But he brought that computer and he stayed the whole 24. He stayed awake the whole 24. He stayed energetic the whole 24. I couldn't believe it. Uh, while most of the rest of us were having trouble staying awake or having to take cat naps, he just plowed right on. He was streaming a bunch too. And uh, he, he stopped streaming earlier, uh, which several people did just because they didn't think they were doing good streaming anymore because they were so tired. And that's fair. Uh I probably wasn't either. I just kept streaming because I don't care. Um, but uh, he stayed the whole 24 and just, we are so proud of him. We are so proud of you, man. It's, uh, it's, it's incredible. He's a big friend of the guild. He loves games. He loves extra life. He loves the guild and we love him too. He's been, uh, he's been an incredible inspiration to us. And he's the reason that he, kids like him are the reason we do this. And, um, yeah, <laughs> it was amazing. It's kind of diverting me a little bit here, too, just thinking about it. But yeah, it, it, it was really amazing. And uh, everybody was so, so happy and so proud of him after. Uh, Olenka came up to us just just in tears after the show was over. She was so happy. And uh, I really hope we get to do this again. It was, it was so much fun. The way it came together, how well organized it was, and the way everybody, including a bunch of people who barely knew each other or didn't know each other at all. I had a bunch of people sitting at my table uh, with their PCs I'd never met before, uh, but they stayed there for the whole 24 hours, and they were all, everybody just came together and killed it. And uh, we made, we got a lot of attention. We got people on Facebook 
local media personalities who we'd never met before who said, I saw what you guys did and it was incredible. If you ever need an MC at events or need help promoting, let me know. Like that happened. A major, a major radio personality just unsolicited hit us up on Facebook and said, I think what you're doing is awesome. I want to help. I think this is a major tipping point for the Guild and for Extra Life in Ottawa. I think this was the beginning of much bigger and bigger and better things for us. Uh, this is only the Guild's second year. We didn't necessarily get a ton done the first year. We had a lot of problems with organization and communication and figuring things out, which we were told is all perfectly normal for the first year these guilds run. Everybody was like, this is the way it goes. It's not a big deal. Uh, you know, don't worry about it. And um, we fired on all cylinders this year. We got our act together and uh, we've been landing it one after the other. And uh, we raised about 70, Ottawa in total raised about $72,000 for Chio last year. We have said that we will not accept less than $100,000 this year. And I think that, and maybe get much more than that, is easily attainable with the momentum that we have going, if we can keep it going. Um, I Extra Life has become a very, very big major part of my life. And it's funny because, you know, I may have said this before, I may not, but, you know, my girlfriend and I probably don't want to have kids and you know I don't have any real young kids in my family um I don't really have a lot of I don't have a connection to young people and I don't necessarily uh it's just not necessarily the the bigger part of my life but and that's all extra life is about is is helping out kids and uh it's really been eye opening for me to to go through this experience and to to share it with people and it's just uh it's been really gratifying and it's Something I am so happy to be a part of and I hope that I get to keep doing. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I, I want to thank everybody involved. Olenka from Chio is an absolute rock star. She is an amazing uh, lady who works so hard. She is one of the, like I said, she always has a positive energy and a positive vibe about her. And she's also one of the most organized people I've ever met in my life. Uh, she's amazing. You know, the guild is where it is in no small part because of her and her support that she has built up for us in Chio. And this was her, this happened because of her, uh, you know, full stop. Um, without her coming to us with this, I don't think this ever would have happened. And I hope we made you proud, Alenka. Uh, you're amazing. And, you know, the guild owes so much to you. And uh, I hope we get to keep working with you for a long time. Um, my cohorts on the committee, on the committee, Frankie and Richard, uh, you know, they played a big part in organizing this. You guys are, are rock stars. The Guild, like I said, it's firing on all cylinders this year. We have so much momentum going and there's there's so much going on. I, I couldn't be prouder or happier to be working with, with you guys. Indeed, everybody on this. It's been incredible. We have some newer Guild members, Christy and Vicky, who have decided to take up the mantle of the Guild's social media because the rest of us, one, aren't good at social media and two, hate it. And my, my dislike of all things social media is very well known. They've taken it and rolled with it. We've got an official Extra Life Ottawa Twitter account and Facebook page that are up now. You know, they were firing posts out on that constantly all weekend and getting us lots of attention as a result of it. Um, it's it's going to become a critical part of our strategy going forward, and they get it. And uh, they're, they, they decided to take up the mantle unprompted and run with it, and I can't thank them enough for that. You helped us get a lot of attention. Uh, Devin and Devin's parents for being a part of the thing with us, you know, he was sitting right in the middle of the whole area, which I don't think we did on purpose, but that's where he ended up being surrounded by the guild and, uh, the, you know, sending his energy out to all of us and, uh, you know, kids like him are why we do it. And that was incredible. Uh, Laura from Freeman at the EY center, you are a friggin' super ninja, uh, she got all our infrastructure hooked up. You know, nothing, nothing was a fight. She was just like, what do you need? We told her, she's like, no problem. I can do that. She got it all hooked up. The internet there was rock solid. A couple of people had some glitches that I don't think were, were, were related to the internet. My streams never went down the whole time. Uh, it was, it was raw. It was a rock solid setup. And for the first time we were doing it, I can't believe how well that went. Thank you to the staff there. As I said, for trusting us so much to leave us there unattended overnight, uh, to get everything done. And just thank you to everyone in the guild who came to this thing. You are all, you all should be so damn proud of yourselves for what we accomplished this past weekend. 
we did immense good and we have taken extra life to the next level in Ottawa. I guarantee friggin to you that this is the start of something. This is the start of exponential growth for the guild. I know it and I, I feel it in my bones that it is. And, and you guys are the, are, are you, you guys are all the reason you did it. If you guys didn't show up to play, this would event wouldn't go anywhere. Extra life would be nothing without the people who play for it. And, uh, yeah, you're all amazing. I can't thank you guys enough for doing for doing this. Uh, also want to give a shout out as well. Several people from other guilds uh, were in my chat and helping to promote us. Sean Hooper from out in Medicine Hat, Hel at Medicine, Medicine Hat, Alberta. Try again. Hang on. He was um, very actively helping to promote us. And I met this amazing dude in my chat called Orchrist Gaming. He's actually a streamer, uh, a reasonably prominent one actually, though he, he doesn't do it as a career. He's a really interesting guy. He's from North Bay, Ontario. He actually plays for Chio because he's halfway between Ottawa and Toronto, so he chooses to play for, for Chio. Yeah, and he's a fairly prolific streamer, and I was talking to him, and he's a super nice guy. I was sitting talking to him in my chat, sort of bemoaning the fact that, you know, I've been doing YouTube and streaming for the better part of three years now, and while I have a small audience in both, it's not growing very fast, and on Twitch in particular, how it's impossible to get noticed because already popular, blah, blah, blah. I've ranted about that before. And he was like, he, he just sat there and was giving me a whole pile of advice on things to do that could help grow. He said, I've never touched YouTube in my life, but he says, I know Twitch fairly well. And he said, here's what I did to help grow my channel. And he's like, if you're really serious about it, this is what you could try to do to help grow your channel. And he just freely gave me all of this crazy advice. And he gave me some really good ideas on how I can maybe meld my Twitch and YouTube efforts in a way that can take the components of each that are not working and that are, that don't have enough audience and sort of merge them in an interesting way that could be good for both efforts. Something that could make both my YouTube and my Twitch stuff go better. It was very fascinating uh, what he had to say. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be seriously thinking about that. That's not something I'm going to talk about right now. But in the future, I think I might do something uh, with that. And if I do, I'll put an announcement on the channel. I think it's going to be very interesting. But anyway, I want to thank him too, because he was a great help and he's just a super nice guy. Um, but yeah, there's more extra life news that will be coming later. Game day is not till November. So thankfully this does give my schedule a bit of a break, which means I can hopefully get back to creating more content here. I have an idea for what I want to do for game day this year. And it's a pretty big idea. Uh, I got to talk to some people and see what we can do, but if this works, it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, and I'll be talking more about that as it happens. But anyway, I've been rambling for almost half an hour here. So I just wanted to say thank you again to everyone who helped make this possible. There's a lot of people I didn't name and I'm sorry if I didn't, uh, but you're all amazing. It, this was one of the, the, the most gratifying things I've ever done in my life this past weekend. And it was an honor and a privilege to, share it with all you people. Um, I hope to see you all around and I hope to see more of you in the future because we got a good thing going here and let's, let's, let's keep it going because it's something, it's something amazing. And you know what? People noticed and uh, yeah, it was uh, people noticed and it's, it's going to lead to big things. So great job, everybody. Let's, uh, let's do it all again in November, shall we? <laughs> oh, geez. Anyway, all right. Well, thank you guys very much for watching anyway. If you like this video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. That does help me out a great deal. This uh, video will go up with the blog, which will hopefully be in a day or two. I, I have tomorrow off of work, thankfully, so I might write it tonight. I might write it tomorrow. We'll see what happens. But uh, I just wanted to say that. I just had to tell people how, how cool this was. And um, I can't wait to do it again, and I hope we get to. So thank you guys very much for watching. And, well, I'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys.